Okay, so Daniel, um, on Facebook in a GED group, um, said that he was having some problems with simplifying algebraic expressions. Um, here's the particular problem that he was struggling with um, from a GED class. So first question, what everybody wants to know, could you see this on the test? Yes, you could. This is about as tricky as simplifying algebraic expressions does get on the GED. But yeah, we could see it up to this level of complexity. So there's a couple of skills that you should probably have before attempting this problem. One of them is you have to know how we um, multiply in algebra. Often your teachers will talk about the distributive property. Um, when they do, that's not something different. Distributive property is part of multiplication. It's that idea that just like it always has, just like it did in second grade, multiplication passes out. I mean, think of how you would do a multiplication problem um, back in the day. Like if I was doing, you know, a multi-digit number times a multi-digit number, I would pass out each number. Like the five would multiply here and then there. And then when I was done with that, I would pass out the three. Um, so we have this idea that multiplication passes out, it distributes. Okay. Um, next thing that you need to know is combining like terms or the way we, we, we add and subtract in algebra. I know that we start using these different terms in algebra, but when we say combining like terms, we're just talking about adding and subtracting. So basically we need to be able to do our multiplication and our addition and subtraction. Okay, There's both going on in this problem. Let me show you how I can see that. First way, the way I can tell that there's multiplication happening, uh, let me get a different color pen. I can tell there's multiplication because I see this term, 2a, shoved up against this parentheses here with some stuff in the parentheses. And so whenever you have um, any expression shoved up next to a parentheses with no um, mathematical operation symbol in between, you can know you're multiplying. So this 2a is multiplying with everything in this parentheses. Okay, and then similarly, I see over here that we have a number multiplying with this parentheses. And careful, when multiplying, you need to pull the sign with it. So this is like negative 3 is multiplying by everything in this parentheses. Okay. Now, just like always, when we do math, whether we're in algebra or arithmetic, we're going to follow the order of operations. And so I'm going to do my multiplying before I ever hit up my addition and subtraction. You've probably heard of the order of operations. Some teachers teach PEMDAS, I teach Gemma. But anyway, multiplication and its inverse division have to come before addition and its inverse subtraction. So let's go ahead and do our multiplication here. I'll pull up this red pen so I can pass this out. So the first thing I want to multiply is 2a by the first term in this parentheses, a. Multiplication passes out, so it will um, this 2a will multiply with every term in here. So 2a times a. Well, obviously, there's only one number here. It's 2. And you say, well, how am I going to multiply letters? How in the world can I do that? All you do is use exponents to say how many of those letters are multiplying. So right now we have 1, 2 a's multiplying. 1, 2 a's multiplying. So I'm going to put a to the second power. That is what a to the second power means, or a squared. It means 2 a's multiplying. Okay, great. I finished multiplying 2 a and a. Now I'm going to multiply 2 a with negative 1. Remember, when multiplying, you consider the sign as a positive or negative that's in front. And so I'm going to get a negative answer. And 2 times 1 is 2. And there's just 1 a, and so I have 1 a right here. Okay, great. I passed out that 2 a to everything in the first set of parentheses. Let me grab my next color pen. Now, I need to pass out this negative 3, remember, to bring his sign to every term in the second parentheses. Every term in the second parentheses. So let's try this. What is negative 3 times a squared? Well, my goodness, um, if you just have a number and a letter to multiply them, you just stick them together. You put the number first, negative 3. You put the variable portion second, a squared. And it's really that simple. Um, so I... I'm getting all these notifications up here. Oh my goodness. Um, so negative 3 times a squared is just negative 3a squared. Now let's multiply our negative 3 times our negative 1. Well, whenever you pass out a negative, it changes signs. So this negative times a negative is going to end up giving me a positive or plus term. And 3 times 1 is 3. 
Great. So I finished my distribution, my multiplication in algebra. Done with that step. And now I need to do my addition and subtraction. Um, the addition and subtraction, remember, is known as combining like terms in algebra. Why? Because we're only allowed to put together. We're only allowed to add and subtract like terms. You cannot add all four of these numbers right here. There's four terms right here. One, two, three, four. But you cannot add them all together. You can only add together like terms. Now this shouldn't surprise you because addition's always worked like this. Like if I was in a word problem in third grade, I would only add together, together apples with apples or oranges with oranges. So um, same thing here. We're only going to add together like terms. Now how can you tell something's a like term? It has the same variable. What's a variable? A letter. But it's not just the letter that's the same because like notice here, this um, term has an A in it. Do you see that A there? This term also has an A in it, but these are not like terms because there's one more th need, thing they need to have the same. They have, need to have the same exponent on that variable. This is a plain old A term, this first one that we pointed out. Here. That's a plain old A, but this is an A squared term. We're not going to combine those. So what we're going to do is we're going to combine all the A squared terms together. Do you see how I have two A squared terms? This one and this one. I'm going to go ahead and combine those. Now remember, combining is adding and subtracting. So if you have two of something, like imagine you have $2. $2. But then you subtract three of them. So you spend one, two, and then you spend another dollar, a dollar you don't have. You are going to be in debt. You're going to be negative a dollar. Now, in this case, we weren't adding and subtracting dollars. We were adding and subtracting a squared. So we're going to be negative one a squared. Okay. That's two minus three. Now the good news is if you really are bad at this game, you'll have your calculator when you do this on the GED. You can literally type in two minus three on your calculator and you'll find out that it is negative one, okay? Um, but I need to talk about this a little bit because mathematicians are lazy. We never bother to count to one. If there's just one of a particular letter, we will often just leave off the number altogether. And so what you're going to see in the test is you won't see this one at all. You'll just see negative a squared. And they're assuming that you know how to count to one. If you just see a single a squared there, that's just one a squared. Okay. Um, and so like, be like a mathematician. Make sure your answers are in simplified form. So don't leave around coefficients of one. Don't leave around leading numbers of one. Okay, so negative a squared. Now, I have two more terms here because I used these up. Boom and boom. I still have this negative 2a and this positive 3. Are they like? Well, no, they're not. This one is an a term, and this one is what is known as constant term. It's a plain old number. And so, since they're not like, I'm just going to drop them both. They can't combine. So I have negative 2a plus 3. And I have to tell you, here's where I can sort out my A students from my B students. My A students know that this problem is done. There's no more like terms, so there's no more addition and subtraction they can do. They're done with this problem. My B students, I love my B students, they're often very hardworking, but they think, oh my gosh, there's still all this math to do, and they try all these crazy, impossible, untrue things to try to make these three terms go together. And the fact of the matter is they cannot combine. This problem's actually done. It's nice in algebra. A lot of times you guys are trying to do more than you actually have to do. There's a lot less work than you think. Um, now, a lot of students say, but what is this? And the answer is, I don't know what number it all equals to because I don't know what A is. And I don't need to. This is as simple as my answer is going to get. This is the final answer. Negative A squared minus 2A plus 3. That is the final answer. And I have written it in the normal order here. The normal order is to write the um, term with the highest exponent first. We call that the highest degree. I 
and then write it in descending order. But if you wrote it another way, if you combine terms a different way, you wouldn't be wrong, okay? So like somebody could have written negative 2a minus a squared plus 3, or 3 minus 2a minus a squared. There's lots of right answers, but I have to tell you this one is the normal way. You look like a math major here when it's written with the highest exponent term first. Okay, great. I know this is a complex problem, and that's because this is as complicated as the algebra uh, really gets on this GED, that, well, at least as complicated as simplifying expressions gets. So it is a challenging problem. If you're finding it too challenging, let's back up and learn these individual skills. We need to look at the distributive property alone by itself, and combining like terms alone by itself. If you do each of those skills alone by themselves, um, then when you come to put them together in a problem like this, it's not quite so intimidating.